Hey guys, and welcome to the Lay High Open Show. Today, we are doing a quick one about Bitcoin and scaling solutions. We saw what happened with ordinals, how the Bitcoin network bloated, the fees became extremely expensive. We're seeing more and more uh, major institutions get into Bitcoin. So we need some kind of scaling solution. And to shed some light on what could be an option, we have the CEO of Tectum, we have Russell Sean. Russell, welcome. How are you? Doing very well. How about yourself? I'm doing great, thank you. It's been a really interesting few months for Bitcoin. We've seen ordinals, we've seen <laughs> um, ETFs. We need a scaling solution. And um, I know that you guys are proposing some kind of solution. So we have had a conversation a few weeks ago. So I just want to go back and understand what's happened with Tectum since we last spoke and how can Tectum possibly help scale Bitcoin? Yeah, absolutely. So to start off there, Leia, we've got a scaling solution called the soft note. And all the soft note is, is a serial number, and it's actually a dynamic passcode. So that dynamic passcode is the element which controls a Bitcoin wallet that's underneath it. So we've got soft notes that start from 10 cents all the way up to 100 Bitcoin. But the problem with Bitcoin at the moment is it's got great security. Everybody loves its security. It's demonstrated its utility. That's why you mm -hmm. call it the hardest currency out there. But the problem we've got is we can't split it and we can't microtransact it. The Lightning Network has attempted to do this, but we've seen the problems with that. So the software is a new take on how to transact Bitcoin. And what we're actually doing is we're sending the ownership of Bitcoin wallets rather than trying to split the individual Bitcoins and then send them and incurring all the wait times and, of course, all the fees that you get on the network. So since we've last spoken, a lot has happened. I mean, the soft note system is fully functioning. That's up and running. The other thing that has happened is we've got merchant terminals that are fully functioning as well. So we've begun to sign up merchants. Our token is about to go live. The token is essentially the entry point into the soft note ecosystem. Through that token, you're actually able to mint soft notes and you're able to do lots of other things in the tech tectum ecosystem. And we've also got the full soft note wallet functioning. So you can go in there now, you can mint soft notes, you can fill soft notes with liquidity and you can start sending them about. And a lot of our community have already been doing this. So it's so interesting that you transfer ownership instead of um, yeah. um, splitting it. So can you just explain how you transfer the ownership of a soft note? Yeah. So to give you a bit of background, the problem we're having with Bitcoin, I would say, is exactly the same problem we had with gold. Gold was secure. Gold was decentralized, but you couldn't move it about. It was very hard to split up. It was very heavy to move about. So, of course, people tried to scale gold by coming up with paper notes. And that would be what I would call the gold trilemma. The gold had this gold had the exact same issue as Bitcoin's got. It was just too slow and too heavy to function as an actual microtransacting currency. So people came out with notes assigned to the gold. The problem was you had no way to store the gold and intrinsically tie it to that particular. And that's why paper notes never really work. You had to have a centralized bank that was storing those notes and controlling all of the supply of those notes. But the great thing with blockchain technology is we found a way to link the two, and that's through the encrypted private keys. So the encrypted private keys become that link between the soft note and the underlying Bitcoin. And so now, based on the Tecton blockchain, which functions at 1.3 million transactions per second, you've got all the scalability you need to send around Bitcoin, and you don't have the restraints of normal slow Bitcoin transactions. It's such an interesting concept. Um, yeah. And I, I need I need to try this, actually. You're going to have to help um, onboard me, as they say, and, and show me how to do this. Um, but what's actually been crazy um, in the UK, I just want to talk about briefly, is <laughs> CBDCs and Bitcoin. Um, yeah. They're, they're coming out with more and more solutions and ideas and regulations. I saw um, the European Commission just put forward um, some kind of regulatory bill. So what, what is your take on CBDCs? I know that they're saying that it's going to be privacy focused. But for me, yeah. I just I see that as very hard to believe. Yeah, I mean, I'm not buying just as though you're not buying it. And the yeah. problem is, we've seen what the authorities have tried to do, whether it's through the 
scandemic, however you want to call it, that we went through, or all of those other elements that we've gone through over the last three years that have demonstrated that really the authorities, whether from a goodwilled nature or not, want as much control as possible. And I think you've seen a gap start to grow between those who want decentralization yeah. and those that want safety. But what you're either going to prioritize one or the other. You're either going to take personal responsibility with decentralization or you're going to trust your safety to the government. And the government has essentially said they're seeing this huge group pull away from the masses and they want to bridge that gap. They want mm -hmm. everybody under some kind of centralized control. So they've come up with this idea called Bitcoin just to play off the most decentralized currency out there. And what they're doing with it is they're trying to manipulate it or twist it so that it looks as though something that would appeal to that subsection of culture that is pulled away from the main. So I don't personally believe, until we look at the actual technology, that there is going to be privacy involved. At the same time as that announcement came out, there was another announcement that said it's no longer going to be on a blockchain. So mm. it's impossible to know what to believe, and it's all going to come down to what technology they actually release. Yeah, it's true. And, you know, just because of how governments behave, I'm still just very skeptical. Or, you know, although it hasn't been released yet and we haven't seen, obviously, what technology it's going to look like, I'm right. still extremely skeptical because, like you said, it's the play on the word Bitcoin to try yeah. and um, show that this is um, the same but a little bit different. Um, you know, the, the way that they're talking about privacy, it's interesting as well right. because privacy has become such a trendy topic that everybody's using it to market. I saw um, I saw Apple have now turned the have, have turned the Apple into a padlock. So there's like oh, a wow. little padlock on top right. of the, the Apple mm. and say, you know, Apple is where you go for privacy. I mean, <laughs> it's just it's ridiculous. That's how I feel about CBDCs. It, it's all just it's all just marketing. Um, but, you know, privacy obviously is very important and security is very important. So just back to tech term and, uh, and, and Bitcoin and scalability. I'm interested to know what this what the security of tech term is like. Do you have audits? How does this work? Yeah, great question. So we're actually a cybersecurity company by nature. We actually started in the B2B environment. So cybersecurity has always been a priority for us. And of course, if you're going to be the scaling solution for Bitcoin, people love Bitcoin because it's security. So you have to demonstrate you've got similar security. Otherwise, you're not going to garner the same trust. So our blockchain actually accidentally, interestingly enough, writes one transaction per block. So it's what we call instant immutability. As soon as that soft note is recorded on our blockchain, it becomes immutable. And that's quite different from the Bitcoin blockchain. As you know, you can get, hundred, you can get thousands of Bitcoin transactions into one Bitcoin block. And until that block is written, and we normally say maybe six or seven confirmations of that block, you don't actually have immutability. So we would say, even by the nature of our blockchain, we start off more secure in the design of it. And then on top of that, we've run numerous hackathons. We've also had numerous bug bounties. We pay a large amount to anyone in our community who can actually find an issue or a vulnerability with our blockchain. And we've also had a recent audit by Cyberscope. We've got a big audit coming out that's been going on for about three months in the next month or so. And we'll continue to run these hackathons. I, what I will say is our devs actually get very excited when somebody finds a bug. It's, it's what sure. they live for. They really want to ensure that it's as secure as possible. So it's really funny to see, but that is our aim, to make sure there's no outages like perhaps Solana or other blockchains and to make sure that we are demonstrating that secure microtransacting layer two. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, especially because it's Bitcoin and the purpose right. of Bitcoin, like you said, is people mm. believe that it is, you know, the hardest asset, the most secure asset. And so, yes, if they if they are going to trust their Bitcoin um, in a certain place, they need to know that it's equally as secure, if not more secure or whatever it is. Right. But out of interest, how much of the soft note system is currently functioning? So at the moment, we would say the soft note system is fully functioning. So we've got a lot of our community that are actually sending around soft notes. We've got merchants signed up who are accepting soft notes. And we've got people paying for things in a P2P-like environment. So it's awesome to see that utility. Nobody's coming back and saying this doesn't work. Nobody's coming back and saying I found problems with the system. And they're really excited about it. Of course, the issue is gaining that mass adoption. We need merchants to be signing up. But the incredible 
thing is our merchant terminals actually went live yesterday. So there's a lot of buzz about that. And with the merchant terminals, it doesn't take anything to get signed up. All you've got to do is demonstrate that you actually have a business, log into the SoftNote wallet, get a merchant terminal, and straight away you can start accepting SoftNotes. And the great plus side for merchants is it's instant accountability. So those soft notes go straight into their account. If you think of Visa card and MasterCard at the moment, you've typically got to wait 24, 48 hours before you get that settlement. But they're much lower fees and you get them instantly settled. And in times of Bitcoin specifically, um, I guess crypto as well, it's been a really interesting week. We saw the spot ETF. Um, the yeah. uh, We saw they filed for the spot ETF um, yeah. in America. So I'm interested to get, your, to get your take. Why do you think that these traditional investment companies like Fidelity, BlackRock are buying Bitcoin? Yeah, I think we've seen groups from these huge institutions rally against legislation, rally against Bitcoin, try to get it censored. But it just comes down to the fact that if you can't beat them, you join them. And I would say essentially that's a lack of integrity. You've got to stick to what you really hold to, what you really believe in. But they are doing it because they are financially oriented. And I would say it's a lot of encouragement to the DeFi world, people who love Bitcoin, because they're seeing that the very people who came against them, those from Mm -hmm. the legacy system that had the most power, are now capitulating and joining the DeFi revolution. So it's huge. I think it's awesome. I think a lot of people are excited about it. And that's why we saw initially when the latest news came out about the SEC going after Binance, Bitcoin dropped off, but it did what it was doing and what we spoke about last time we spoke. And it was very resilient. It bounced back and it went to a higher point than it was prior to that. So yeah, great encouragement on the Bitcoin front. Yeah, I mean, these major institutions know that they have to get in, otherwise they'll be left behind. So I think that's extremely bullish. But sometimes I am concerned that they're just buying up all the Bitcoin. I mean, MicroStrategy bought another, I was it 12,000 Bitcoin, I think, worth over $300 million the other day. I actually don't know how much Bitcoin they hold off the top of my head, Um, but it's unbelievable. So do you ever worry that Bitcoin could perhaps become centralized just because of how many institutions have the ability to buy that much bitcoin to a certain extent but what you see is as soon as they buy bitcoin all the DeFi guys buy bitcoin Mm. so they're essentially creating a bigger problem for themselves than they think and in the long term because it's decentralized and because as soon as it starts to go through the roof had they taken this tactic three years ago they may have been successful but i think it's gone too far that too much of that percentage of bitcoin holding is with the general community yeah it's an interesting take i I think that's definitely fair because as soon as they buy, retail starts buying. So, right, you know, every, everybody right. copies. Yeah, everybody follows the smart money. And what is what is next in the pipeline for Tectum? So we've had what's called a fair launch. It's a very decentralized way of doing a money raise. And the amazing thing about our fair launch is it's on Genpad and we've broken every record so far. This started about two days ago. It's gone crazy. People are reaching out that we've never met before, wanting to know how they can get on board. So that's very encouraging. We've got one day left of that as we speak, as the time that we speak is that. And from there on forward, it's going to be all about getting merchants on board. We believe if we get the merchants on board and we get people signed up for the soft note wallets then people start to transact in it and because we're a utility project as soon as they see that utility we really believe it will catch on people will talk about it and bitcoin can become what it really is meant to be which is a global currency and a micro transacting currency i actually watched your interview with bitboy and he oh, yeah. said that in the future the global currency needs to be backed by bitcoin and if soft note is not that, I don't know what soft note is. Well, tell me, Russell, why is it taking so long for us to get a good working uh, scalability solution for Bitcoin? Yeah, I think we addressed this last time. And I really think it comes down to just being simple minded. We had the audacity to say, why don't we move ownership of Bitcoin? rather than Bitcoin. And nobody said that yet. And one of the incredible things about moving ownership of Bitcoin is it actually takes it out of the Web3 environment. It makes it completely boundless. So you get to a state where you've got the boundless nature of cash. You've got the zero fees or low fees of bank transfers, but you've got all the decentralization and all the speed that the crypto world can offer you. So it beats fiat currency in every way with the soft note solution. And it gives you 
back full control of all of your finances, which I believe everybody's looking for. Absolutely. And how can people follow you guys and stay up to date or, you know, try out the soft note for their Bitcoin? Like how do, how do they get involved in this? So the best way to do that is to go to tecton.io or softnote.com. You can sign up for a wallet there. You can start minting your soft notes, jump into any of our pre-sales. We're live on the decks on the 3rd of next month. And once you've got tokens, you're straight into the ecosystem. Russell, thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure having you on. Um, you know, we're always looking for alternative methods to scale Bitcoin. Lightning, I've never really um, liked that much. So I'm super excited to give um, the soft note a go. So thank you so much for joining me. Great to be here, Leia. Speak soon. Absolutely. And thanks everyone for tuning in. Don't forget, we'll be having more of these discussions coming very soon. So make sure you follow Russell, make sure you follow myself and also head over to my YouTube for more information about everything going on in the crypto space. We'll see you soon.